division, internal uh, anarchy, and what happens when anarchy arrives. And that's poverty. That's the poverty regime. So I'll go back quickly to the slides. Alisa, please help me with this. I'll rush through the slides and come to my recommendations, sir. Takes a long time. Now I'll even go faster than I intended to. Energy has three uh, uh, basic uh, facets. Conventional thermal hydrocarbon, which we know, uh, we have all grown up in it. Alternate thermal and nuclear. And then there are the renewables, the new buzzword. Huh? Then conventional thermal hydrocarbon has oil, furnace oil and diesel, has a gas methane route, and has coal lignite. Lignite is, of course, brown coal. It's a poorer variety of coal. But the thar is full of lignite, although it has low sulfur. And by the way, everybody speaks of thar. I had the pleasure of meeting Colin Barton uh, from Sydney in 1994 in a metallurgical conference, and he was also excited. He had done the inception report, although there were several national reports had been done, international reports had been done by Japanese, Polish, Americans, USAID. But Colin Barton, an Australian, went very deep into the subject. He said it's got high moisture, but it's low sulfur. He said I could not, I could even call it normal coal, it's, except the BTU is low. But it has a lot of moisture, you can't store it. The moment it dries up, it becomes inflammable. So you have to use it at the mind mouth. And I think uh, Munawar Basir Sahib is better qualified. He's studying it very uh, clearly, uh, very, very uh, deeply these days. Uh, alternate energy is biodiesel and all, you know, and then ethanol and alcohol fuels, we call them, and then fuel cells. Fuel cells is a tremendous uh, new area in uh, alternate energy. Uh, you use divided energy sources, and um, uh, it's, it's, it has no carbon footprint, and it has no heat footprint also. Uh, Renewables has hydro, solar, solar has photovoltaic and what is now known as concentrated photovoltaic that uses glass mirrors, very effective, takes the efficiency from 17 to 29 percent approximately. And then there's a solar, solar thermal CSP, that stands for concentrated solar power. That's again mirrors uh, which concentrate in a special tube and it's again a very high uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, efficiency and is being used for all kinds of power generation. It's different from just a mirror attacking a tower. That is another thing that is for very large projects. But for that, you need a huge space for putting all the mirrors. This is mirrors, troughs, troughs on which there is a running tube, which is which has got running water. And this is, let's say, 120 to 100 megawatts range. That is the size of the project for, for CSP. Uh, then we have wind or wave. I think this is an area we should not touch. We all know what it is all about. Biogas is, we know, very small biogas unit, but also biomass and biogas are two very close cousins. Uh, landfill gas becomes biogas. It's methane. Uh, organic green waste, this is kitchen waste or garbage or uh, trees and uh, what have you, you know, all green waste, including even types of grass, creates, through fermentation process, creates gas. Uh, and it's very methane rich, by the way. And then we have wet biomass sludge. Don't be embarrassed. This actually means sewage. And uh, uh, recently in Abu Dhabi, I saw several demonstrations of how they convert sewage. And the best came from an American company. It says there's nothing left except uh, uh, cellulose uh, oil. You go straight, you burn the oil, and what is left is some ash, which goes straight into cement factories. They make very good binders. So now the race is on okay, how to use sludge to an extent that nothing is left behind. This is an ExxonMobil projection where they say oil will be still a very important component in 2040. I don't, I don't agree with that. Hydro has a very small light blue corner upstairs. Nuclear is a little bit bigger. And uh, other renewables, I don't agree with this. This is an oil, large oil company's outlook, and we have to take it with a rough salt. Then we have a breakup from 2010 to 2040. This starts from 2010. And that was starting nearly 100 years ago, you know. Then we have future power generation options is hydropower. Uh, in fact, the potential is now talk, uh, we are talking of Pakistan's hydropower potential, especially high head, and all, all the mountains where water meanders down is, is now eight, about 80,000 plus. And we've exploited 6444. Four, four. Maybe after Neelam Jhelum in 10 years' time, we'll have a little bit better, and maybe at Tarvela they'll build the fourth extension one day. Coal is miserable, you know. Potential is so much greater. In fact, it's much more than this, 100,000. And, uh, but uh, Munawar Sahib will tell you more about it because underground coal gasification is a little 
is a little problematic, it seems, on a commercial scale. Above coal is a problem, as I told you, Colin Barton says it dries very quickly. You have to use it quickly. So you have to gasify it. And how you do it, I don't know. Uh, it will have to be looked at. Solar potential is much more than 2,000. We have terawatts of energy here. We, uh, solar is absolutely wrong. I apologize for this slide. It's about two years old. The thermal oil and gas is 25,000. Is again incorrect. This is based on how much you can import and, uh, and, and use. Nuclear 3345, this is again uh, update. Sorry, this is an old slide. Hydel, about two years ago, these were the tariffs. And you are financial people, you should understand what this is all about. And then we come to a slide made by WAPDA's present chairman, uh, an ANP nominee, I'm sorry to say that very openly. He was my class fellow in school. Quite a character he is. Spends only three days of the month in Lahore. The rest he is busy with PR skills, trying his PR skills in Islamabad. He's in his fifth year, and God help us that the most important civilian job is with a gentleman who does not understand what it's all about. He's a retired bureaucrat. He, bureaucrats can be very smart also and become good financial managers. He's neither.